Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, Alex, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Mr. Brown? Good. I was uh, reading the San Jose Mercury the other day, which I like because they've got a great obituary. Oh, really? Page, yeah, which so you don't see much anymore. And, and I, one of the things I like to do is I, <laughs> I always like to find out people that died that were younger than me. Well, that's and, which, that's the reason. Which is a lot now. <laughs> well, that's the reason why I always looked at the uh, what do you call it at the. Um, uh, at the uh, uh, obituaries. Excuse yeah. me, I'm a little out of it today because 8,000 things are going on here. But anyway, uh, no, I, I always read the obituaries to make sure people died who were younger than I was. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, or older than I, or younger, younger than I was, yeah. Uh, but the fact is that now at my age, it, it, I'm, I'm watching the obituaries to feel glad that I didn't die, okay? <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, you know, who was it? I think it was. I think it was Carl Reiner, who said that every morning he would get up and read the obituaries, and if his name wasn't there, he went on with his day. <laughs> Good <laughs> yeah. way to do it, you know. But um, so you, so you look at it to see people what who are younger than you. Yeah, yeah. In the, you know, I mean, ten years ago, it would be now. It's not a. Now it's kind of a, you see a lot of them, but uh, yeah, yeah. Then I went home and I found my old uh, almanac, and I found I started looking at actors that uh, these people that accomplished a lot that were much younger than you or I. So, like uh, and they, Peter Lorre, Peter Lorre died at sixty. Really? Yeah. He always looked like he was in his eighties, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, when we say Peter Lorre, let me let me uh, preface that by saying Peter Lorre was an actor who was in movies. Okay, and the reason I'm sa- I, the reason I'm saying that is the people we're talking to right now probably don't remember Peter Lorre. Would you say that's uh, probably not? No. You know, I, I think uh, I could dig, go out there and if I were in an average audience, this is an older audience that I tend to get, but in a normal audience, and I mention uh, the Beatles uh, and say to somebody, name all of them, they couldn't. You know, they usually they miss George. <laughs> Oddly <enough. laughs> Forgotten Beatles. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just that we assume that people know when we say Peter Lorre who Peter Lorre is. And the fact is that Peter Lorre, unless people watch old movies, which nobody does anymore, right? Because there are no car crashes and no beat em up fights, you know, and so on. Uh, but if you watch Casablanca, you know who Peter Lorre is. You know, if you watch The Maltese Falcon, you know who Peter Lorre is. But if you don't watch those films, which is most people, because they're in black and white, forget it. They don't know who they are. You know. But Peter Lorre was 60. God. I, yeah, I, I would have uh, thought he was much older than that. Best known for uh, Maltese Falcon, I would guess. Yeah, lesser known for uh, uh, Casablanca because his part is smaller in Casablanca. But uh, do you know that the uh, Maltese Falcon was made three times, two times before the one you know? I did not. Yes, it was made in 1930, starring Ricardo Cortez as Sam Spade. Uh, And it was pretty much the same story. Okay, not a bad movie, I might add. Really? Yeah. But then they remade it in 1936 with Betty Davis called Satan Met a Lady. 
and it's the same plot except instead of a Sydney Green Street uh, male character, uh, it was a female. And they were going after, I think it wasn't the Maltese Falcon, it was called something else, but it is based on the Sheil Hammett's uh, 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 novel, uh, The Maltese Falcon. So it was made then, and then they made it in like 1940 or 41 with, uh, with Bogart and John Huston directing it, and that's the one that became famous. But they made it, within 10 years, they made it three times. Jesus, <laughs> until I got it right. <laughs> well, that that was not unusual in the early days of films because movie companies owned rights to properties, right? And uh, they had to make, you know how many movies they made a year, a studio? They had to make to fill the theaters. 52 films a year. Wow. They, yeah. And I don't know if that included the short films, you know, the, the, the companion features. You know that were really short. Like, you know, if you watch uh, a Turner Classic movies, you'd be surprised at the number of films there are that are under seventy-five minutes. You know, there are some films that are like fifty-nine minutes. Um, really? Well, yeah. you know, Woody Allen's run pretty short, and and Hitchcock. Yeah, but they ran short, but they they ran about an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes. Um, that 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 you're right there, but it, it, they weren't that short. They weren't under an hour, for instance. So TCM every now and then will spend a day running films that were, you know, under an hour and ten minutes or something like that, and they run like a ton of films, you know, almost twenty four films in a day. But they had those films, and some of them were made, some of them weren't companion features. Some of them were actual features. But anyway, anything else you found in your almanac? Yes. Uh, let's see. John Candy died at forty-three. Wow. Yeah. Well, that I believe because I remember he was a fairly young man. You know, but it, grossly overweight, and uh, literally asking for it. Well, his father and brother also died of a heart attack at the same age. So at the same exact pretty, age, and were they heavy? They all died at 40. Yes, that's a very strong genetic feeling <laughs> like there. Yeah, but were they heavy? That's the question. Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, wow, 43. Okay, what else you got there? Steve McQueen died at 50. Yes, he died of... Uh, what was it? He had, it was, some, he had some gigantic tumor around his stomach. And remember, he was, went down to Mexico. He went down, and to, was down to Mexico. Trying to yeah. experimental treatments and everything. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that probably killed him more than uh, the actual disease. That probably did so. him in, but uh, he, was, uh, he was a huge actor in the 70s. You would imagine, if you have that kind of money, okay, which I'm sure Steve McQueen was not poor, uh, if you have that much money, that you should be able to get the best doctors available and somehow f get answers to tumors and things like that. But he went to Mexico. Uh, who else went? Didn't didn't Andy Kaufman do the same thing? Didn't he go to some and, quest? Andy Kaufman was thirty four. He died in eighty four. Yeah, he went. Uh, I guess that movie didn't he go to the Philippines? I think so, yeah. And it was, it, there was some, you know, fake faith healers there, you know, that he went and tried. But now that, he used to show up. I didn't know this. I was a new comic then. But they said right before he died, he kept showing up at the other cafe in San Francisco and would. Uh, he'd just look around. They asked him if he wanted to go on. And he said no. Uh, uh, the story I get was from Monty Hoffman. Who was also dead? How old was Monty when he died? Do you know? Well, let's see. Monty was born in '51 and died about. He died about ten years ago. So. Yeah. Well. Probably mid '60s. Anyway, Monty told me the story about how he was outside the other cafe, and uh, there was, you know, Andy Kaufman, and he went up to Andy and he said, "Hi, Andy. <laughs> how how are you doing?" And Andy said, I'm dying. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. He said, I'm dying. 
and uh, um, you know, Monty was taken aback by that, and he said, uh, well, you know, is it bad? He says, yeah, it's terrible. He said, but you know what the worst part about it is? He said, what? He said, nobody believes me. <laughs> Which I can understand because, you know, Andy was always known for doing massive put-ons. Yeah, and uh, there's always rumors that he's going to pop up someday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But, I mean, um, he, uh, that was, a, to me, that was tragic because nobody did believe him. And uh, he, uh, he went on and, you know, he died. Uh, I can't remember what he died of. It was some, I think maybe a cancer of some sort. We've had, yeah. we, you know, comedians either live to be really old, or really young. or really young. Uh, I Bill, mean, you Bill know, I, I always, uh... I always bring up Bill Hicks, who um, the last time I saw Bill Hicks was in the green room at the Punchline, and I sat down with him because I knew Bill and I liked Bill and Bill liked me and you know we had a good rapport with each other. And I said to him, so uh, how you doing? And he said, well, he said, this is my last performance. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm giving up comedy. I said, you're giving up comedy? Because that would seem ridiculous to me. This is a guy who was maybe one of the best up-and-coming comics of the time. And uh, he said, yeah, I'm just going to go back and live in Texas. And, but he didn't say he was dying. But that's what it was all about. Wow. He knew he had pancreatic cancer, and there's basically very little cures for pancreatic cancer. Uh, my wife underwent pancreatic cancer operation that did make it go away, but then she got cancer elsewhere, you know. Uh, but uh, 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 he, he had pancreatic cancer, and he knew that there was nothing he could do about it, basically. Uh, with pancreatic cancer, the doctors say, go home and make peace with the world because you're going to be dead in six months. Yeah, he was 33. He was 33. And I, I really, I th uh, that that's a loss that I mourn, you know. Number one, he was a nice guy. He was one of the good guys. And he was one of the rare genius comics, you know. Uh, not that you aren't in that group, by the way. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to insult you by not implying that you aren't <laughs> yeah. one of the geniuses. But I think look you, at Mitch, Mitch Hedberg. I think thirty-six. I didn't know of Mitch Hedberg. I'm, how no, old? He was, was, how old was he? He was about thirty-six when he died. But by the way, folks, if you're just tuning in, isn't this another wonderful session with Bubs? Uh, you know, isn't this life affirming? <laughs> Next time we can read from a black box. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, you you used to bring that in to the show. Yeah, it's, it was a Remember, we get, we'd get the other comics to play the co-pilot, and we'd read them. <laughs> yeah, but they all. They all I remember that there was uh, there was this book called the Black Box, and it was black box conversations just before a plane crashed. Okay, and uh, every one of them, they were transcripts, ended with sound of impact. Sound of impact. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Do you, do you remember any of them? Do you remember one that stands out? I remember one, these guys, it wasn't a big commercial plane, but they were flying around Texas, and they were, it, it was bad weather, and they were lost, and... One guy's looking at a map, and he goes, there's there's a mountain around here about 4,500 feet, and he asks, what's our altitude? <laughs> uh, the guy goes, 4,500, sound of impact. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. I mean, those people are dead. No, it's they horrible. Have, they have fa <laughs> families that cared about them, but, you know, come on. Gee, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but I remember you came in with that. That was your That was your big deal. Yeah, uh, but but now you've got your almanac. Now I got my uh, Paul Lynn, fifty six. Really? Yeah. Again, you know, um, I, uh, I I would think, okay, 
that he would have been older than that. You know? Yeah, I think these. Yeah, I think these guys have been a lot older, and I'm shocked when I see how young they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now that we have people who died when they were really old, Th- those are the ones I'd like to hear about. You know, uh, but we just lost uh, when this was recorded. We lost Pee Wee Herman, uh, Paul Rubens. Uh, he was seventy. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the best line he ever had anywhere. It was after that whole arrest down in Florida for jerking off in the porn theater. Um, uh, he uh, he went to the MTV Awards and came on and said, Anybody heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> <laughs> um, he was, I think, singularly brilliant again. You know, and I don't throw that term around too often. Um but didn't you think, weren't you appreciative of him and what he was doing? Yeah, I remember going to see uh, the movie he did was hilarious. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. That was Tim Burton's first big film. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, I thought it was wonderful. The it thing was hilarious, was, yeah. Well, the thing was, and I, you know, I say to Marjorie, we should watch some uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse because you can find them various places, right? Mm-hmm. And she says, no, I don't want to watch it. And I went, you know, you're really denying yourself a pleasure here because this was a show that was made on two levels. A, it was made for kids because it was on Saturday mornings. But the other level is it was made for adults. And that's what was so wonderful about it. And every adult I knew watched that thing on Saturday mornings. You know, so I really appreciated him for what he created. That all started as a theater uh, exercise at the Groundlings down in L.A. And he was part of the Groundlings. And then he took this character and just uh, put him on TV and everything else and and became very successful with it. So I, I uh, I really appreciated the guy, you know. Sad to see him go. Uh, but he, yeah, he was 70, he, 70, that old. 70. No, it's that's but to me, that's not that old, you know. To you, how old are you now? Uh, I'm just uh, just over that, so 71. So. 71, so you know, you, you figure you're on borrowed time now. I do, yeah. Well, borrowed time actually is, I think, anything over what, uh, six, uh, 77 or 76? What is it now for males? Males go uh, earlier. Seventy seven or seventy eight. Yeah, seventy-seven or seventy-eight, and what is it for women? Do you know? Uh, Eighty. Eighty, and the reason is the reason guys die younger is because the women nag them to it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now that's a sexist joke, and I will stand by it. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, so I mean, uh, it, 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 you know, it's sad that these people go so early. Because they, you know, they at least should be able to, earn, you know, live the fruits of their, of their labors. In other words, they get to be older, got a lot of money, go have a good time. You know, they never had time for that. No. You know, they never had time to retire. I think that's probably the term we should use here. But uh, all right, well, let's go back to the almanac. Who else do we have? Okay, we've got... Uh, and let, this time, say the name, but let me guess the year. Okay, okay let me see. Uh, hmm. Yeah? Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was somewhere in the area of 35? Uh, 33. Okay, so I'm, I was close enough. You're very close. Yeah, yeah. Um... A lot of people think he was murdered. Um, yeah, that was a weird one of those weird. There's so many people get murdered on movie sets, right? Well, <laughs> he wasn't. He didn't die on a movie set. He just died. Uh, he and he, it was of a of a. Some, Maybe his son died in a movie. Does set. it say what he died of there? It does. It just got the year. He died in '73. Does it say what he died of? No. Hold on a second. Echo. What did Bruce Lee die of? 
Bruce Lee died at, on July 20th, 1973, from mm. swelling of the brain caused by a reaction to prescription medication. Oh, it says a, a, a brain swelling caused by prescription medications. Oh. Does that sound suspicious? That sounds very suspicious. Yeah. They say it might have been the triads. You know. Um, it, it, it Who knows? But, uh, again, uh, a guy who was having a fairly interesting career. I mean, he pretty much created the whole um, martial arts end of, of movies, you know. And everybody since then has tried to imitate him. So it's, uh, you know, it's amazing what he did. Who else you got in there? Who else you got in the book? Let me guess the age. Uh, okay, very. Uh, Peter Lawford. Peter Lawford. I'm going to guess maybe maybe 63? 61. You're very good. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's young, though, isn't it? <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I mean, there was no reason for him to go. But, you know, a lot of these guys in that time, uh, they smoked, they drank, you know, they did all those Big things. Big boozers and uh, uh, smokers, yeah. Well, you know, sure. I, I watch movies today that are, you know, from, you know, the, the 50s, and everybody's got a cigarette in their mouth. And I'm going, no wonder these guys died young. Yeah, Humphrey Bogart, 57. Humphrey Bogart. Always, always smoking in the movies. Always smoking in the movies, and uh, and I don't think he was always smoking in the movies because it was part of the character. You know, sometimes you smoke because it's the character. Uh, but I mean, it just. I mean, I can't imagine how many people were killing themselves. I can't imagine that I was killing myself with smoking. You know. Luckily, yeah, I never I, saw you smoke. Um, uh, luckily, I stopped in time. I stopped when I went to the quake, and some guy came in one morning and said uh, he was his his bit bit was you should stop smoking, and they said well let's give you a test to see if you have any of your breathing hampered at all by smoking, and so I took the test and yes my breathing was hampered by smoking, and I went home that day and I said today's the day I quit. And I went out and I bought, I remember there was a thing called Bantron. There were these pills you could take that were nicotine replacement for your system. And I took those for a couple of days. And I said, I'm, I, 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 and I always say to people to do this if they want to quit smoking. Don't say you're going to quit smoking. Or don't say you're going to quit something. You're just going to see how long you can go without doing it. Okay? Because if you say you're quitting, you set a, a bar that you have to hurdle. Whereas you say, I'm just stopping and I'm going to see how long I can stop, you're giving yourself a little, you know, goal, as it were. And I did that and I, I quit. I completely stopped. Stopped when I was at the quake. Were you, you were on with me at the quake, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. And you didn't ever see me smoke there? No. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, because I always had a cigarette in my hand. But I was, mm -hmm. that was just at the end of the quake when I first came on. Tell you, years later, I went to a urologist, and he said, well, you might have, uh, he says, did you smoke cigarettes? And I said, yes, I smoked for 20 years, but I quit, quit about 25 years ago. And he said, well, we still got to check you for, for, for uh, uh, what do you call it, bladder cancer. Bladder uh, cancer, I, yeah. I, well, he was trying to pad the bill. Uh, and I said, why? <laughs> I said, I quit smoking. He said, well, he said, you know, you smoked 40 pack, two packs a day, so that's 40 pack years. And I said, so I might still have cancer from that even though it's 25 years later? And he says, yeah. I said, then there was no reason for me to quit, right? <laughs> and he had no answer for that one. But, you know. I, I, uh, God, I enjoyed smoking. It was such a prop, you know. Did you ever smoke? No. No, because my parents were chain smokers, so I hated the... I just couldn't stand the smell of smoke, so you, I never did it myself. Did, did they die of cancer, of lung cancer or something? Or no, no. What did they What did they go of? Uh, just like... Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, 
bad arteries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Were they older? But that, that which is caused by smoking. So were they older? Oh yeah, they're in their uh, mid to late eighties. Oh wow! And they smoke. They chain smoke. Uh, they finally quit in like in their sixties, I think. But it was, but uh, they it was a lot. But well, I'm thinking now, you know, at this age, I could, I could go any day now. I I ought to go back to smoking or at least trying heroin. <laughs> Anyway, we've run out of time here, Larry. Once again, another wonderful uh, get-together with the likes of Larry Bubbles Brown. We'll see you next time, Larry. See you next week. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That was Larry. Yeah. Okay. Turn on the mic, Alex. Yeah. Turn on the mic. Um, I. You know, I got myself a new mic today. Well, I, it's over there. I'm, I might plug it in later and ask you what you think. Uh, it's not any better than this mic, but it will. It's a. Uh, it's a little. Like a little more uh, bottom to it. Uh, it's kind of. Kind of has a nice bottom to it, but we'll we'll see how how it works out. I don't care. I'll just keep buying microphones till I get one that suits me. This one is getting kind of old here. This this thing, uh, and uh, I'm getting a whole stand that like comes out and hangs here, and then I can push it out of the way and so on. So, oh, uh, just just improving Gabnet about the time it probably should be put uh, put to sleep. But anyway, hello to all of you and. Uh, uh, let's see, we have two people waiting to come on here, so I may as well admit them uh, and let them uh, uh, start uh, start yapping. Uh, hey. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, well, well. There, there's uh, Josh, and, and there's Jeff with his audio still on. Is and, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, let's see, we have two people waiting yeah. to come on here, so I may as well admit them. Jeff. Uh, uh, How you doing? You got to get rid of your audio. Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, yeah. There's, well, there, there's uh, uh, John, and, then, and there's Jeff with his audio still on. Just, just, just go to your go to your browser and turn it off. Just kill it. Kill your browser. Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Bingo. Well, we can't get going to you. Okay, that took care of it. Did you see how you took care of it? How'd you do it? I found it in the corner and I turned it off. Okay. Well, go look for it there every time. You know, you should turn it off before we, when you come on, when you sign in, you should turn your audio off. You know. Okay. And, and just wait for me to come on and you'll see me and you'll hear me. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, hello, Josh. How are you, Josh? Good. How are you? Yeah, been quite a week, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, you must kind of because you you you're, you're into the history of America. This must kind of be an interesting history-making event, isn't it? I mean, not uh, yeah, not I mean, a, for bad reasons, but you know, it's yeah. For absolutely it's, horrible uh, reasons. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's bad, but I mean it's uh. I mean it's interesting because it's got to play out, and you know it needs to finish its process and and everything. But you know we kind of need it in a way because we've really you know we've sunk very low, and we need to sort of get. I get some yeah. consequences to reset this. I mean, I'm not rooting for Trump to be guilty and jailed and all that because I don't like him, but I would like to see it happen so that we can get this precedent on the record that, you know, all of our powerful politicians now from that point forward can understand if they pull this stuff, they are going to go you know, to jail, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and that's what we need because they're just, they've been pushing the envelope for years, many of them, and it, it's just creeping and creeping. 
and it's time to put a stop to it. Yeah, you but know? you know who's been who's been pushing the envelope? I mean, it's basically it's been Trump. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, we've never had a president who had this little respect for the office. Yeah. In history. And a guy would take advantage of it, and for his own mm-hmm. advantage, you know. I mean, he wants to be president of the United States again, so maybe he can weasel out of this deal, you know, out of, out of yeah. these charges. And and I think that I think kind of what I was referring to was it was just also we were also kind of pushing to this point where all the politicians were getting to, you know, because of Trump, we're getting to this thing where like no matter what someone in their party did it must not be wrong because they were in their party like gone were the days where oh you he broke the law sure take him away and yeah, send his you, replacement you, you, you know? got a lot of guys like mccarthy who yeah. are are, uh, are sitting there uh, yelling and screaming first of all they're they're going back to hillary clinton okay yeah, you know y- you know and then uh, and and um, you go. They, they sometimes they're even invoking Al Gore and the fact that he didn't just give up. Well, it was so close. You don't give up. Well, I mean, well, five million it, votes like, isn't too close, you know, you know. I mean, you know, but <laughs> well, the Bush campaign didn't give up either. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, right. I mean, you know, but in that case, everyone was just wanting the votes to be counted. You know, no one was disputing the count. They just wanted them counted. You know, I mean, I guess maybe there was some disputing of the count, so I got to word it right. But I'm, I mean, it, it just wasn't. You know, no one was throwing out just craziness in there, like, oh, you know, uh, Bush was winning by tons and tons, and then all of a sudden, all these rider trucks just started backing up to the docks of the counting center and. Then Gore was winning. I mean, no one was making up ridiculous stuff like that. Yeah, no I mean, was uh, when when was it the Republicans became total assholes? I mean, when was it that they that they went over the edge? I mean, I understand being the opposition party, yeah. and I understand fighting is the opposition party, and that's that's a healthy thing, okay? Yeah. But well, when did it become just? so entrenched and I mean then they turn around what other what other year would the Republicans have backed somebody like Donald Trump with all that he all that he's got on him probably never I mean I think when pol- politically the country realigned in the early 1980s with the Reagan presidency and the rise of the religious right and other ultra uh, conservative Mm -hmm. and liberal you know think tanks and you know things like that where politics almost became also an industry you know like a business well what it it went it went from being a trust Mm -hmm. to a to an industry yeah that's what i'm saying and that that proliferated in the 80s under reagan presence i'm not saying it was reagan's fault i'm saying that the the apparatus that we have now came about during that time and as it as it began and it's ramped up to the point that we're now we're at now we're like i said you know and both parties can sort of be this way i definitely think the republicans are worse but it's almost you know it's just gotten to the point where no matter what takes place that person's party oh no 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 that that's that's made up they didn't do that you know i mean you know they will just they will defend anything in the name of their politics i mean like i said i I don't understand what's wrong with saying this person is in our party they have been found indicted found guilty you know shove them off stage right and send out their replacement well i mean most of the time they would say we don't need somebody with this much baggage right you know that what why should we we be strapped with this baggage right so but you know like in 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 that 80s sort of era you know i just think that everything sort of became in that you know everything was just totally about one side against the other with this vilification 
-hmm. of the other side. You know, if you elect the other side, they are just going to ruin planet Earth and everything that you know will just be over. I mean, the Republicans would have said, if you elect a Democrat, it's going to be, you know, Marxist, Leninist, Communist, ABC, you know, and the Democrats would have said, if you elect a Republican, you know, they're going to ruin everything with their ultra conservative. The government will just close up shop. It's done. You know, it was like extreme. Well, you know, you, well, you know what I said, though, I, and I always tell the story over and over and over again on election night back in, what was it, 2016, uh, two, two, yeah, 2016, uh, I woke Marjorie up and I said, well, it's over. And she said, who won? And I said, Trump. And she went, oh my God. Well, and my reaction was, give the guy a, a chance. I said, we don't know how he's going to try. He might surprise us. I said, and secondly, there's only so much damage you can do to this democracy till the next guy comes along, you know? And I got to say, I was wrong. I was oh, dead I, wrong. I, I think maybe wrong on the personal side of Trump's actions, but I do think there is, you know, still yet only so much damage. I mean, I, I guess I would try to argue on the positive side that these things were noticed and that they were called out that he has been indicted that he has what what happened to my been over these uh, things you know I mean I guess I would say that I understood these things took place but it would be a far different conversation if we were standing here and there were no charges of any kind there were no indictments and he was well on his way to you know uh, a second nomination Right. But we're not, you know, so I guess I'm saying that, you know, prosecutors, and it's not just a prosecution. I mean, it's several different ones in all different parts of the country. They're unconnected to each other. Different jurisdictions said, this person broke laws in my jurisdiction, and and they're doing something about it. And, you know, I think I heard the other day that over... Over 1,000 people thus far have been charged with uh, crimes committed at the Capitol on January 6th and are serving jail or prison time. Not fines, probations that are actually, they are incarcerated. Over 1,000 people are incarcerated for some period of time, some of them not too long, some of them longer than others, for their actions on January the 6th, you know, mm -hmm. which I think is positive. I mean, I, I think the punishment should be very harsh, but that's a personal opinion. That's not the law. Well, shouldn't so. it be harshest on the ringleader? <laughs> well, I would not disagree there, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I certainly think the people at the top of that uh, owe their debt, and I mean, maybe but what, it's coming. What I'm sick of are guys like McCarthy and so on who get up out there and they start saying, well, what about Hunter Biden? And, and today, today they had Hunter Biden's partner went in front of the Congressional Committee. Did you hear about this? Yeah, right. I know he went in front of the Congressional Committee. And, of course, they were hoping this is how they were going to nail Joe Biden. Yeah. And he said, at no time did Joe Biden ever involve himself in Hunter Biden's business. No, he didn't. At no time did he do anything else. The only time he ever called Hunter was to find out how he was doing, to make sure he was holding up on his sobriety and all of that, but that he was never involved with him in any of these business dealings. Right. And they must have felt like crap because he completely undermined their whole argument that, oh, we've got to impeach Joe Biden for, you know, for what went on with Hunter Biden. Right. Enough with this Hunter Biden stuff. It's an entirely different set of, of circumstances. Yeah. To begin with, and it he, was... And he did testify um, yeah. that... His son, Hunter Biden, did try to get his father to interject. That he did trade on his name, that he did tell people that he could get influence. Mm -hmm. And then he would put his father on the phone, and he wouldn't even go anywhere near it. Who? You who know, that, Biden wouldn't go anywhere near the phone. Right. That, you know, he would start hinting around about, let's do some business, and 
Joe Biden would start talking about fishing or something, you know. Yeah. And say, uh, I got to go, you know, see you later, bye. How's the weather? Yeah. Right. You know, well, so Hunter is not a moral character, or at least he wasn't. Maybe mm-hmm. he's reformed. I don't know. And there are plenty of people that would say, you know, if that were my kid, I'd throw him out. And that's a fair enough assessment. You can do that with your children if yeah. you choose. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, Joe Biden chose not to and that's he has just as much right to that as you well would the fact that he chose not it, when he, the fact he chose not to sp- speaks well of him because he cared about his son and he cared about his son's health and he cared about all of that so he would p- he would pick up the phone when hunter would call and you know i mean uh, hunter hunter is a pretty terrible kind of egregious person for doing what he did, which could only get his father in trouble if his father didn't know what was going on, but I think he kind of sensed it. But what was amazing, this committee was ready to just, you know, nail Joe Biden, and they couldn't. All this guy said were nice things about Joe Biden. That's yeah, it. I mean, you know, and 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 that guy's going to jail, and... You know, so he didn't get anything for his testimony. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the Republicans are the ones that brought him up there. And, you know, now he's he is going to prison for like a year or a year and a half or something for unrelated. So that's what I'm saying. That whole deal, there were a lot of people in that circle who were breaking laws and were criminals. And, you know, I mean, they were corrupt. But Joe Biden wasn't one of them. So, you know, if you have something on Joe Biden, bring it out. But, you know, they obviously don't. I mean, that, that well, deal I mean, mess. you know, the thing that I don't understand is, you know, we go from literally sometimes in the same couple of sentences from Joe Biden is so. Se- Everybody's frozen. Now. Which way to walk off the stage. And he, he's just so stupid that he has to take naps because he's senile. And then the next sentence, he's also the mastermind of a, a, a international criminal crime family. Uh, what is family. it? Which one is it? I mean, a little bit of both. I mean, I, you know, I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, is is he is he uh, senile Joe or is he you know crime boss Joe? Yeah, uh, it seems to me that he's so senile. Both of he's those smart. Things cannot be happening at one time. Well, I listen. I am. I'm getting a little tired of their whole uh, attitude about Joe Biden and his age and his ability to to uh, do his job, um, because it is ageism to begin with. And secondly, in spite of the fact that he may stutter, and he may falter occasionally when speaking, and he may seem somewhat doddering in nature, but that's more the stutter than anything else. Uh, the fact of the matter is, he is still running this country every day of the week. He's still doing his job, you know. He's coming down from the, the bedrooms upstairs into the Oval Office, and he's doing what needs to be done. And evidence of that is that the economy is getting better, you know, and that the job outlook is getting better, and that he's doing what he can do. And all these people who say, oh, it's been horrible under Joe Biden. No, it's really been horrible under the economy that Trump handed us. You know, so many times we always blame the person who's currently in office for the things he's trying to fix up that the other administration completely faltered on. And if you remember, that's the same thing that happened when Obama came into the office, too. Yes, yes. But Obama handled it. He got it done, you know, but it took him to... It was a different situation between Bush and and Obama, but it was the same economic situation. Yeah, yeah. And and what happens is a lot of people say, oh, you know, the Democrats just don't know how to handle the economy. The economy <laughs> traditionally has always gone bad as soon as the last party has left office. And the fact is that when the last party was in office, they did all the things that manifested itself in the first couple of years of the president who follows him. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. And that stuff doesn't happen. It doesn't get fixed overnight either. Right. Right. 
<clears throat> I mean, the economy is not uh, in bad shape. I mean, you know, GDP is up, inflation is coming down. I mean, look, I as of yesterday at you know yesterday evening at some point look the the rate of return on my personal 401k investments for this year was up over 16 nice. percent maybe i just maybe the economy's terrible and i'm a really good investor well what i would say really is to, ev to everybody yeah. who who has a, a, a truck with uh, joe biden look at your 401k see what it's doing today and if it's, and doing, if it's doing worse than it did last year, then uh, okay. Yeah, you, and, look, you know. and I'm not saying that it was bad under Trump or anything. I mean, it's not a... That's what I'm saying. Why does it have to be... Oh, here I go. We're freezing up tonight. One versus... You know, what about yeah. your guy? What about your guy? I mean, like, your mom, your mom, no, your mom. Just, just talk about the issue and how you're going to fix it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> None yeah. of that other stuff really matters. By the way, the people who are watching, I'm having a little bit of trouble tonight uh, with the uh, uh, with the internet. It seems to be blanking out every now and then, but uh, don't worry about it. We, it comes back, so. Uh, so, you know, I mean, but economically, things are, I think they're better than decent. I think they're good. Yeah. I mean, I work for a large company sales are mm -hmm. up business is very busy how, 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 how about how, how about your 401ks uh brian up right but like josh is saying you know i had man i was stupid back then when trump you know i posted some stuff at trump and then everybody came out of the woodwork but you know these guys are telling me oh brian when biden's president he's going to take away your cars you know, it's going to be all electric and all the gas cars are going to seize. And I'm like, you guys are, where are you guys hearing this stuff from? You know, it's like. Yeah. Don't be, don't be morons. Hey, Scott, are you there? Scott's hmm. not there right now. Huh. I'm he was there for a second. Yeah. No, he was there and then he. He's just he, trying he, to get his video going, I think. Okay. So, oh. I mean, the, they're, it, the Biden team is at least doing a better job, in my opinion, of getting this information out there. Mm -hmm. I think they did not do a good job at it the first year and a half, two years. They seem to be doing better at it. And, you know, for the Trump part, I mean, I'm sure he'll cruise to their nomination and all that. And that's, I guess that's fine. If they want to run a fucking convicted felon you know let him i mean yeah but i don't want that kind of guy at, uh, with his kind of morality as my president i don't either you know Enough people are voting for him don't care they're a die hard trump people. no they're they they don't it's not that they don't care it's that they are and can i say this without fear of i think uh uh <laughs> of of, 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 uh, of uh, what do you call it of uh, anybody disagreeing his people are morons I mean, come on, anybody, anybody who would vote for somebody who has this many charges against him, and they're still, George hasn't come through yet, then it'll be four different cases against him. But Criminal they're loyal, cases. They're loyal morons, though. Yeah, but they're, I mean, they're, how? They don't care if he, they don't care, like he said, right? Didn't he say that? If I shot, if I shot somebody at, at Times Square, Five feet away from somebody or something like that, he goes, I would still win the nomination. He was e absolutely correct. That's the yeah, only thing that's, 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 that's the, the only the that's the only more. thing he said that's right. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. He was absolutely he, he right. He knows that. So he said yeah. So Josh, we had a, a kind of a question or a thought the other night. Is it we weren't <clears throat> sure whether if the president and I didn't think so, but the the, the president gets into office he's elected he's convicted can he pardon himself and i don't think that there is something in there that says that he cannot but there's nothing in there that says he can right yeah there's right. because nobody's right. ever done it before nobody's been that obnoxious to do something yeah, like there's that. no express language to forbid it but there's also no express language and you'd probably have to go through a lot of shit and a lot of yeah storm to get it done state, there's also no express language to state that it's allowed right um 
I, I would say that he cannot. And I think that if it happened, it would be challenged. Right. That it would probably end up, obviously, in the courts. I personally it would be a big think, storm, yeah. I don't personally I don't think the judicial philosophy of this court would accept it. Um they have had several checks on executive power hmm. uh even with the group that they have now in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. This would be a mega one. Yeah, and if I'm anything when I, I'm absolutely certain <clears throat> that the framers of the constitution would not uh, have a <laughs> Yeah. They didn't even think I something like no this was going to. I mind about that. They didn't, even, they didn't even think that this was going to ever come to fruition. No, but yeah, I don't think the right. framers of our Constitution ever felt this would happen somewhere down right. the line. Sure. You know? Right. I mean, but they here we are. Yeah. They expect the American people would. But vote for he also has people. to get there, and that's kind yeah. of a what if question. Yeah, it's a long way off. But I mean, I, I seriously have no that I have no doubt of that. And I mean, look, if there is someone on TV on some channel next week saying that he thinks they would have approved of it and all that. That's fine. They can go ahead and say it, but they're not going to change my mind. And right. I've read just as many books on that deal as I guarantee as they have. I own all of them. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not changing my mind on whether or not a president can go break a law and then just say, well, I pardon myself. Right. Well, that's what I heard on There's TV. No I heard someone say, oh, well, he'll get into office and he'll just pardon yeah. himself. And I'm going, I mean, uh, you might want to look that one up because I don't well, think it's anywhere I, I to look think, up. I think he might try, but I don't oh, know. I, that, I don't, oh, sure, he'll try. That, that he would try. Absolutely. You know, but, I mean, I, I, I think I have a good to very good grasp of Framer's mindsets. And I mean, look, you know. Thomas Paine's famous line that in America the law is king, I believe is what the framers believed. You know, they believed that we didn't need a king because in America the law was king. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said that before the Constitutional Convention. He said that during the Revolution. But, you know, I wrote that. That, 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 that's kind of in the same thought process is that he can think that he can classify, declassify yeah. a document. He can think so. No, that doesn't I happen. thought I did it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, none of, none of that, none of that passes the legal test in court. Right. I mean, all of that stuff sounds great at a rally tonight in Alabama, <laughs> you know, and you can kick back on C-SPAN and mm. you know have a Trump branded beer and you know all that if you want. And it you know, but Say that's rah, rah. totally different. Uh, that's totally different yeah. than the courts. Yeah. You know? Well, <laughs> the I mean, federal uh, criminal courts. You know, I mean, I don't think that we ever thought that we, we there were a lot of things we could complain about a president on. I mean, you know, the right. fact he was doing a lousy job or that he was didn't know what he was doing or that he was too conservative or any one of a number of different things we could gripe about. But nobody was going to actually gripe about a guy being a crook. And Donald Trump is a dyed-in-the-wool crook. He learned how to be a crook from his dad in real estate. He learned how to be a crook when he finally had to deal with business in Manhattan. He's been a crook all of his life. And who did he have as his major lawyer? A, a mob lawyer, Roy oh, Cohn. A team of them. He's a crook trying to be a king. You know, a couple, yeah. couple of his lawyers are probably going to end up in jail. Sure. Well, one of them already has. I mean, well, that's true. Hmm. Yes. But a couple more of them are probably going to join him. I do you mean, think none you, of them are going to get paid. Do you think uh, <laughs> a, a unidentified uh, conspirator number one has a good chance of going on uh, on to be tried? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Rudy. Yeah. Rudy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I agree, you know, and then you know, I'd love to see Sidney Powell right behind. Well, now, I, I heard let, this. Let, let's look at a sickness here in America for a second, and see what you think of it. And that sickness is that the more charges they throw against this guy, the higher his ex uh, acceptance by the public. Now, yeah. how is that, and why it's is crazy. that? It's huh? crazy. What'd you because say? In America. Wait a minute, Scott was saying something. Scott. Okay. 
it's crazy that he gets more publicity the more he gets convicted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and more acceptance. His numbers go up. And the money he gets from his contributors goes up in spite of the fact that money isn't going to advertising uh, him as the next president of the United States. It's going to his defense team. I thought yes. that was illegal. No, it isn't. It isn't right, Josh. He can use the money any way he wants? I believe so, yes. In fact, uh, if there's any left... No, no, if they've got some wording in there, that's probably right, I'm sure. If they there's do. any left over, you can hold on to it to do with, with it whatever you if want they, to. But if, That's if after the, the campaign. Yeah. yeah. If, the, if the language basically says the funds are going to be used to operate the pack and part of the operations cost is legal fees, I mean, you know, that's... Yeah, but legal fees, so broad, legal fees, you know. because you're in a criminal compl uh, fighting a criminal complaint I mean, against not you. That I know of. I mean, you know, but uh, I'm definitely not the expert on that. But, but I mean, all I'm saying is, what kind of country do we live in? You know, if America loses its democracy, I'm blaming the people here in America well, for doing it. Definitely be the people. You know, it, it, democracy, folks, isn't something that you just accept. It's something you got to work at and fight for. Well, but they, there's a large portion of this country that identifies themselves as victims. And Donald Trump identifies himself as a victim. Yeah. Well, you know, I love his latest statements. He's been say, he said this on more than one occasion uh, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering uh, for you. You know, I'm yeah. going through this mm -hmm. for you. And I kept thinking to myself, wasn't that Christ's whole exactly. routine, you know, Great that he died for your man. sins? He thinks he's Jesus Christ. Yeah. He is. <laughs> and didn't, and didn't Reagan say, Iowa. Make, did, did, didn't Reagan say make America great again? I mean, doesn't he steal everything well, from Oh, people? he stole that one, yeah. Uh, yeah. Give, you show us your whole face uh, there, Scott. We only see your elbow. In the oh, I'm trying to do my hair. It's all messed up right now. <laughs> He's so outside of a, your head going back. Too many shots from there. That's right. Yeah. He's outside a bar where internet is good in Iowa. Hey, the internet is good out here in the bar in Iowa in Solon, Iowa. Come on, look at this place. It's awesome. Yeah. Wait a minute, that looks like a parking lot. <laughs> what? Okay, there's a parking lot next to the Jack and Jill and whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got to have a place to park. If so go let me ask you. Let me ask you, Scott. How many cocktails? Yes, how many cocktails have you had tonight? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it's obvious. Too many. A, uh, a lot. A lot. I need I'm to go. About number seventeen. Yeah, you're bra you're breaking up a little bit too. Are you? Is that your okay, house? Okay. Is that uh, what? What is that porch you're on? Is that a house you're staying at? No, this. Well, see, you're breaking up on us. That's why I'm saying. This is a bar. If you went inside, is it a bar oh, in Iowa? Because if he were inside, he might get a better. Uh, but uh, be a lot more noise though from other drinks. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. He signed on to Jack's show from that location last week or something like that. I think it's better that he's frozen up and can't talk. Well, now, he's, now he's frozen. <laughs> or he passed out, one or the other. I have no idea <laughs> what that is. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens here. But it's just, you know, that, uh, you know, I heard some kind of interview this morning, and I know they're going to try to play this defense that, you know, everything that he did, he was just, this was all on the advice of his counsel who are all charged. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I just, I heard someone say that, you know, this lawyer that he had that was telling him all this stuff about the electors and all this, you know, someone called this guy a renowned constitutional scholar and I'm just fucking listen. Yes. I wrote a very large thesis on the Constitutional Convention, and I didn't cite this guy's work anywhere. <laughs> he is not a renowned constitutional scholar. Richard Beeman is a constitutional scholar. Akil Amar is a constitutional scholar. Lawrence Tribe is a constitutional scholar. John yes. Roberts is a constitutional scholar. This 
No, Josh Josh Wheeler is a constitutional (laughs) scholar. No, he's not. It's just, you know, that I mean, you can always find an attorney who can round about in a circle and then back up and down or whatever, sort of back you into any kind of theory that you want, you know. Uh, So... He doesn't have a lot. Well, of let me ask lot. Brian something here. Oh, here comes here comes her nibs. There we go. Uh, Hi there, Adrian. How are you? Her nib. <laughs> I see Charlie. You're, you're, there you go. There we go. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, show me now. Yeah. Anyway. She came into her nails. Let me but... let me ask you. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh wow. That was freaky. Okay, okay. Yeah. We're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Growing up talk. Go away. Growing up Hello. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, well, uh, I want to ask you, you know, you have you have three kids in your house. Mm-hmm. You know. Are they aware of what's going on? No. I what even when the whole Trump and everything was going on, I asked them, are they teaching you any of this in school? Are they talking about anything? And they're not at all. Really? Wow. They were at I'm, my school, my daughter's school. You see, yeah, I mean, I mean bet in Florida it's taught commonly how Trump's so great. <laughs> no, but I think that I think that they would have done a really decent thing. Uh, if they in schools would talk about this, but not be one-sided about it, right. but just say the process that's going on, what he's been charged of, uh, of, but no prejudice in the actual teaching of it, but that it is a beautiful uh, uh, history, uh, a beautiful thing to teach what's going right. on here. Yeah, because I think there's this unique period of time that we're not going to, you know, hopefully we don't see again. But yeah, and take advantage of this, take advantage of this to be able to show this maybe with some history, you know, but at that current time, because when else are you going to teach something like this? Well, this is... I used to tell her all the time, you're sitting through some of this history. Yeah. Yeah. It's living history right now. Uh, Yes. No matter what's going on and who's doing it whatever right. happens is yeah. going to be written in books yes, later Charlie. on. And 50 years from now, you'll be able to say, oh, I knew I knew about that when I was a kid. Yes, Charlie. Uh, yeah, now Josh, correct me, but I, th- I don't think that my lawyer told me it was okay to do that is a valid defense in crime. Uh, if your lawyer told you it's okay to rob a bank, does that mean you can go rob a bank and you don't have to worry about going to jail? Well, of course I, it is. <laughs> Uh, of course it my is. Lawyer right. said it was, my lawyer said it was okay. I could go rob that bank. In fact, yeah. they're probably going to be uh, considered to have been party in furtherance to a crime. Accessory. Probably be disbarred and then criminally charged. With well, it. here's the thing, though. That, that They're making a big deal out of this, that, that Trump didn't know uh, that he was doing anything wrong, and this was only his opinion that the election was stolen. But it may, remained his opinion until January 6th when every lawyer he had was telling him, you didn't win, okay, get used to it. Oh. You know, so, I mean, that's not that's not a defense, is it? Is it a defense no. if I go out and uh, I go and shoot somebody and then I go, oh, I didn't know there was anything wrong with that. You know. I actually believe he deserved to be shot. Yeah, he, I believe he deserved to be shot, exactly. He doesn't really have, you know, a defense, and I mean... You know, again, I I basically I would I really refuse to, you know, even really get in dragged into the what of. Mm-hmm. No, there they go. Well, just because you know, like I've said before, if someone, you know, were going to come on here and want to argue it that way, mm-hmm. I'd do it just the way that I always would. I would say, fine, I concede your entire argument. He's absolutely corrupt, guilty, the whole whatever. Everything you say is true. But, like in Phil's case, if you were a police officer and you arrested two criminals and you put them both in the same room and you said you're under arrest for this crime and you're under arrest for the same crime, or maybe even different crimes, and they both pointed at each other and said, I should be innocent because he's guilty, and the other guy said, I should be innocent because he's guilty, would, would, that, would we accept that? Would the police accept well, that? Well, I, I was mentioning the, last night that the, 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 the one thing they're saying is that uh, 
uh, tr Trump isn't being treated like other people would be. Well, and right. I and I agree. He isn't he being treated that. like other people would be because if I did what he did, I'd be coming to try and just working my ass off to get up the bail, okay, sure. that they handed me. And you know, I I'm sorry. Uh, he's getting away with with a lot of things in this case. You know, show up if you want to, but otherwise you can show up by uh, by uh, you know the internet. I mean, come on. He should not be treated any differently than you or I would be treated if we were charged with exactly the same thing. But, you know, it's what I'm saying is if, oh, but, if, yeah. if, if tomorrow I said, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. Hunter and Joe are just the biggest crime family. You're, you're right. You know, I mean, they're 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 going away, you know, mm -hmm. headed to the slammer. That has nothing to do with your client. Over right. <laughs> yeah. But Trump did what he did anyway. You know, right. you know, yeah. so, I mean, that's why those arguments are, are just they're a waste. I mean, I, I just. If if that's the way that we're gonna do it, then you know, anyone in in this country who gets a speeding ticket tomorrow can just go to court and tell the judge, well, you know, all these other people got speeding tickets yeah. too. I mean, you know. it isn't is, isn't Trump kind of a crybaby? Absolutely, I kind of. <laughs> I, I would classify him maybe as wine ass. I don't know. I mean, maybe not, but. But I mean, yeah, okay. all these people buy this. I mean, I'm I'm doing this for you. Yeah. I'm suffering for your sins or whatever. You know, uh, come on. I'm doing it for you. Yeah. I mean, none of this would be <laughs> happening if you hadn't done what you did, you little selfish prick. Yeah. Yeah. I call him a little bitch, but that yeah. would be anti-woman. So yeah. I'm probably, Whiny. I already did. Shoot, sorry. Yeah. So I wonder what I wonder what Ray's eating. Ray. Because he apparently is very Salad. proud. Of it. Uh, apparently, you're very Salad. proud of it because you're standing up there eating it, you know. Well, because because I didn't want to be too close to the camera eating. Oh, okay. But we can still see you eating. Hopefully, it's something good. It's yeah. salad. Right on. It, it's salad with tomatoes. Did you use hot sauce on it? No, no, <laughs> not on my salad. Not on my salad. Well, not on my salad. Not, okay. Not, not on your salad. Okay. He'll okay. try it on his oatmeal. Yeah. yeah. Last night, did you hear? I mean, Ray had this little kerfuffle with uh, Tony. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Tony. Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, don't, I don't know. He oh, said. I don't know. I had no oh, idea where so that came nice. from. Yeah. I thought Tony maybe snorted a little coffee instead of drinking it. <laughs> well, you you have his curtains, and then you also put a picture of the uh, the woman, the lady who turned the, the the skeleton that turns around in the chair in Psycho, right? Yeah, but I've had that for like two years. Yeah, yeah. And I was sitting in front of it, and he said, "What's that?" And you said, "That's your mother or something," and he took a fancy well, because. <laughs> Because we had talked about it so many times, and he said he yeah. thought it was funny, and he wanted me to keep it up. He he made a hundred and eighty degree turn, you know. So I yeah. changed all, it. All of a sudden, he's going, "You think you're funny? You're no comedian." Well, no, he's not a comedian. <laughs> he's an actor. Yeah, yeah. And then he just starts trying to insult me. I didn't, I didn't care about that part. I just felt like, okay, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm insulting your the memory of your mother. I didn't realize that it bothered you. You told me it didn't. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. what? Uh, and, my my system's having issues, but but you, you know I I sort of feel the the way Tony but he handled it wrong. You know if it's been on there and he saw it and he knows oh that's the you know the my mom thing. I think he should have handled it better. Maybe like after the show, sent you a message and say you know what I'm I, I don't feel comfortable with you having that anymore. You know it's still resonating the death and all that stuff and please take it off. Then I think it would have been held you know handled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had offered to take, told him I'd take it off many times before, and he said, no, no. No, there we go. We froze again. Something has changed in Tony, because the time before that was last Thursday when Phil was on, and he wasn't acting like he, like like Tony normally acts. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, well, well, it was, to me, I found it strange. So. Well, sometimes, you know. I hope I mean, he's okay. Maybe, 
you know. You know, maybe he, maybe his, his mom's death is getting to him now. You know, I mean, sometimes it's delayed. Maybe. You know, I, I didn't yeah. want to, I didn't want to insult him. No, yeah, and, and, you, like, and I, I just didn't see why he had to like had to start like, you know, in, trying to insult me like that <laughs> over yeah. and over again. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think if it was hitting him like that, he could have handled it better. But yeah, I, yeah. I, but not not to explode on in front of everybody. And we have like, a bunch of people here right now who uh, uh, are copacetic which, enough that and last night that you know we was we that don't, last we, night's show? Yeah, we don't get nasty with each other particularly, you know. And um, that was that was just I don't know somewhat uncalled for, but you know. I took I took it down right. Away. Away. I won't put it put it up there anymore. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, the joke is not so much. I think that that's his mother, but that that is the mother that turned around in the. Uh, in yeah, yeah. Well, I, right, right. That's all it was because we were talking about Psycho when I made that thing, and that's why I had the birds on there. Did you ever know? I was watching know. Psycho again. And we just screwing around. I was watching the end of Psycho the other night, which, by the way, has one of the worst last 10 minutes of any film where the the psychiatrist yeah. explains the whole the whole plot of what happened you know <laughs> but then they go in and there is something that I noticed every from the very years ago and it's there if you look when they go see him you see him in the in the jail in the cell against the white wall and he's talking and then he looks down at his hand and there's a fly and he says and I wouldn't even hurt a fly you know, and it's the it's his mother's voice, okay. Yeah. Freaky. And then they go, and, and I wouldn't even hurt a fly. And then he, I think maybe there's one other line I don't know. And then they do a f dissolve from him to the car being pulled out of the of the uh, uh, of the uh, river or lake, oh. and just for a brief second, you see the mother's skeleton face. Have you ever noticed oh. that? Yeah. Next, huh? Mm hmm Yeah. I noticed. Yeah. Next time you watch that, just look closely. Oh, it's just, it's like a you can it's a brief second. You basically see her teeth more than anything else. Oh. Uh, but I thought that was brilliant. After you know ten minutes of getting a lecture from a doctor on what you know <laughs> what happened. Wasn't yeah. that around the hmm? time when they? thought that you know subliminal messages could be put on in movies like uh, you know a little a brief a couple of frames of a hot dog or whatever and you'd go eat and, uh, you'd want a hot dog somebody around. used to claim that and and i always felt it was called subliminal advertising yeah and that they would if yeah. they showed you a, a subliminally just one frame just one frame boop of a hot dog yeah. you get hungry uh, mm -hmm. right. I, I, I'm sorry, I never got hungry when they did that. I uh, they they showed me some subliminal advertising, and you know I don't even get hungry if you're going to show me just a here's a hot dog. Okay, well yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a busy town that Scott's in. What? Yeah, it is really. Hey, how's yeah, look you at all the tra look at all the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he knows Alex Bennett. <laughs> and, and and that's the only person in town that just walked by. Right. Hey, he walked right by me. That's <laughs> turning off the lights. In yeah. some cities, they grab your iPhone when they walk by you. <laughs> hey, hey, Scott, here's you, you here's that car coming by. Hey, Scott, you used to live out here, right? What, uh, sir? What? You what? you used to live in the Bay Area, right? No. You used to live in the no, Bay Area. No, no, oh. no, no. Dallas, Dallas, Plano, Texas. Plano. Oh, I thought I thought you lived here for a while. Uh, listen okay, to so the oh, accent. God, no. Listen to the accent. He's from Texas. Yep. No, I know, but I thought he. Was I have here no for a accent. While. I'm from Iowa. When actually, <laughs> uh, well, somebody yeah, else. Jack is. Daniels accent right now. Mm -hmm. Jack Daniels. Yeah. You know when, when, when what 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 did you say, Jack Daniels? When my wife have a Jack Daniels accent. When my ex-wife no, Ronnie. No, it's a it's a oh. Hendrix tonic. Uh, can I can I talk? Is my turn. My turn. Uh, when I was when I lived in uh, Texas with my wife Ronnie at the time, when we left Wait. Texas, she had an accent. After we left, she got yeah. an accent, and it took her several years to get rid of it. You know. <laughs> 
Yeah. Now, Some you, people now, pick up accents really fast. Well, no, it isn't that people pick up accents. Really? I'll tell you, I was even picking it up. I, I got rid of it faster. And the reason you... But you had the British accent. I had the British so. accent, but, you know... <laughs> yeah. But I did Very pick up. Long. I did pick it up, and um, the reason it's so easy to talk in a Texas accent. It's a very relaxed way of speaking, and so you have a tendency to just go into it. You know, I mean, to begin with a, a word like "y'all," y'all is, <laughs> is is much yep. more effective than "you all." Or all <laughs> yeah. of you. Is that the Seven Eleven down the street there, Scott? No, Seven Eleven's in Solon, Texas. Okay. Then, now, where are you exactly in Iowa? Solon. Solon. It looks like Salon. It's uh -huh. spelled like Salon, but Solon. I see. Okay. Yeah. And it's nice. That sounds. It's nice. about thirty-five hundred people. It's so cool. I love it. <laughs> really, and 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 why do you go there? Are there people there that you know? Cheap drinks, <laughs> or is the oh. or is the booze cheaper? Well, the uh, rum and tonics are about seven bucks a glass here, and they're about thirteen bucks a glass in Iowa City. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's cheaper. You're also from the, the, that town, right, Scott? I'm sorry, what? You're from that town, aren't you? No, I'm from uh, about 40 miles northwest up here. Oh, okay. In Iowa City? Iowa City's uh, south of here, about eight miles, nine miles. Oh. University yeah. of Iowa. It's a, yeah, it's a cool right. college town. A very nice college town, yes. Yeah. All right. By the way, Jeff, we haven't asked you how you are tonight because you haven't said a word. Well, I just yeah. said I, uh, I said something about Iowa City, but that's right. It. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I've been. Uh, I was going to talk to Jeff about my uh, heart issues, but that's okay later. About your you what? Heart issues? You have heart issues. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, what do you mean? What? T tell us about it a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, I, I have a uh, I have a lot of pauses in my heart issue, and Jeff should know about that. Mm -hmm. I think. Jeff, go ahead. Wow, go see your cardiologist. Have you done uh, that? Have, have you seen a cardiologist about this, I, Scott? I'm going when I get back to Texas. I'll see a, uh, an electrophysiologist. I think mm -hmm. cardiologist, something like that. Yes. yes. Is this PAX or AFib or what? Where you're missing? Sounds like people? AFib, right? I, I, there's yeah. some guy running his car so loud right now down the street. It's, it's it's just a, you know, I looked it up on the internet. It's no big deal. Pax. But my heart. Pre, my, pre I, I, I miss arterial about, contractions. No, I, I miss about uh, every hour, I miss about 11 beats. On my mm -hmm. heart. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Tony, are you there? I don't think that's Tony. It's I don't think it's Tony, Tony either. Anthony. That's why I just put my face on the screen, oh, and no. we oh, we will remove this person. No. We will remove. No, it's not that a guy again. Oh, it's Phil yeah, Meyer on the toilet. Uh, yeah, what's it? Did, he, did he start running something there? No. Nothing. No, I was joking. No, I got it. Before he could be, uh, uh, you know. Mm. But anyway. I'll go around the backside of the bar. All right. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, are, are, you, are you using Wi-Fi there or are you using the phone system? Wi-Fi. Oh, because you might lose it soon. They probably don't have cellular in the town he's in. We have cellular. <laughs> it's not that bad. But you have to crank it in order, in order to get it. it. It's, it's like a small town with no police. It's awesome. No fucking cops in this oh, town. Let me, let me go back it. to this. There we go. 
Okay, I, I put my face up there because we wanted to prevent that person from doing what. Oh, here, right. here he comes again, Anthony Magno's. I'm iPod. down the alley now. iPod. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, folks, if I kept myself on screen there for a while, but I forgot to go back to you. I, I just text Tony to ask him if he's trying to call in. So. Yeah. yeah and we didn't see anything, Alex, other than. Yeah. Yeah, well, well like but then, then everybody kept yesterday? everybody kept yeah. seeing me, so that's the problem. You know. Man, I was having nightmares after that thing yesterday. Really? No. Oh, okay. It was quite awful, though. Yeah. Yeah, but you watched it seventeen times after the show. <laughs> well, yeah, I just had to, I had to I had to assimilate myself to it so that it didn't bother me anymore. <laughs> you know, that story. it's called exposure therapy. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. I'm hold on a second. I'm I think we're about ready to see that with Scott. He's going down the alley to do what? I'm. I'm so, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm going to do. That must be some I'm great. Gonna... That must be some great Wi-Fi because it. Yeah. You, you know, you haven't blanked out yet. What's big? Can you see this? Can you see this? Big car? Grove. Yeah. Big uh, Grove. Yeah. That's big my grove. buddy. The big grove is the uh, bar I go to. Yeah. And this this guy lives down the uh, mm -hmm. street, in the alley from Does me. Does somebody drive you home? By the way, you walk. I can walk home from here. Oh dude. really? Yeah. Are you sure you're yeah, capable of? Are you sure you're capable of walking? <laughs> yeah. Somebody gonna walk you home? <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Alex just got demonetized. No, it, it, it doesn't matter. Hey, it doesn't matter. I, Alex just lost twenty-five cents. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see if I can get to my uh, garage here with the Wi-Fi. Oh wow! Mm. Oh, you're you're actually on your way home. Yeah. Oh. Can you see my garage? I see yes. a garage in front yes. of you. Oh, what an unusual yeah. garage. It's moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Does the whole town it, have Wi Fi? Well, I mean, I'm within a range of the uh, big group Wi Fi. Oh. Okay. I won't let you see my code to the garage, but. Oh. <laughs> It's so okay, we're, all, we're all gonna fly up there and, and steal your stuff. For oh day. yeah, steal my shit! Hey, that's my garage. So you live next to a bar? Oh yeah. How convenient! Oh, oh it's yeah, lovely. Really. That's my car. It's lovely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How? Get in it and do some donuts. Tony says that was him trying to log on. He was just saying that he was just joking with Ray, and he's fine. So. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you see, it's I didn't. All right. he, it's all right. he, he should have picked up faster, other because otherwise we just yeah. thought it was some kind of prankster. Yeah, he says there's no porn. He's not naked. He's on the sofa. <laughs> oh, Tony, <laughs> not naked. Yeah, yeah. Don't let him know that. Well, anyway, I'm about ready to put on the theme here. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, and and start saying goodbye to all the fine people that have been with us tonight. Mm. Thank you so much, Jeff, for being here. We appreciate that. Uh, Josh, any last words about what's going on with Trump? Keep about watching, Trump. I guess. Huh? Just, just, just keep watching. Yeah, and we'll see what lock happens. Him so up. Sick of this. Yeah, lock, lock him, him up. up. Lock him up. Yes. Uh, um, lock uh, him up. Oh, by the way, at his uh, at his arraignment, there were not very many people outside protesting. <laughs> like three. Why waste the gas? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Kevin. I appreciate your call, as well as Brian's. I always appreciate Brian's as well, as, as well as I appreciate Alan's. Why am I being redundant here? Uh, we hardly ever see Scott, so when we do see him, he, he, he can't see us. Uh, and uh, but uh, anyway, uh, thank you oh, so no, much. Don't take Scott. off the shirt, Scott. Don't take off the shirt, please. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> don't yeah. give me. Oh, Show us your tits. Hey, <laughs> hey, stop it. Stop it. No, jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Charlie Wallace, thank you, and thank you to Ray. 
Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. If you like citizen panels, there's going to be another one in uh, just a couple of minutes right here uh, at, uh, at Gabnet with uh, uh, Jack Bishop. You can call him on Skype at Gabnet Live. Uh, I will be back again here on Monday for the pop-up show. It'll be on uh, on uh, Facebook. And then we'll be back again on uh, fr- uh, Wednesday uh, at, at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.